Hey guys, it's Greg Tastic here, and I'm recording this video for the third time. The second time, I didn't know to put my fingers up into the screen. <laughs> but, um, I like jerry rigged this, uh, this, uh, this setup. I have my RX 480 outputting HDMI to a video capture card, which is hooked up to my laptop, which is in a second. The video ca capture card software is in a second virtual desktop in OBS. Studio is recording it in full the preview in full screen. So hopefully everything is okay because I already had an issue where the first video got screwed up because in the middle of it the capture device just decided to stop working. But that's okay because we're here. Um, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm running the I have the Ace Rock Fatality X370 Gaming K4 motherboard. I know it's a mouthful. Uh, the BIOS version that I'm running is 1.64, which is a, a beta BIOS. As you should already know, I have a Ryzen 7 1700. It's running at uh, 3.8 gigahertz, and I finally got my memory running at DDR 2400, which I am very happy about. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of the options that. I'll go I'll just leave everything up on the screen long enough for you guys to see because I'm not gonna explain every little thing because this thing has a million options especially compared to the Asus board but I'll go over what's important to me and what differences I know there are specifically between this and the Asus board the Asus X370 Prime Pro I believe it was called so the first uh, tab we have is OC tweaker overclock tweaker and that's where we can set the uh, overclocking stuff we have uh, this was set to auto I guess actually the original uh, what the hell th what am I trying to say the original BIOS had a different way of setting the frequency that I didn't like but here we just set it to manual and choose the frequency we want for me, anything over 3800 megahertz is really like not even loading, either not loading into Windows, it's crashing before it gets into Windows, or it's not posting. And I guess that's okay because 3.8 gigahertz is kind of, the ASUS board would get into Windows and I could actually even do stuff in it over 3.8 gigahertz, but I couldn't get it stable over 3.8 gigahertz. So it's basically the same result because I'm I'm not happy that, that, I guess, I don't know why the ASUS board could run a little further, but it's not stable. So what's the difference? Uh, we have SMT mode, which the ASUS board did not have. That's simultaneous multi-threading. That's like the whole hyper-threading thing, I think, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And you can enable or disable it. Uh, I was able to, so I have that set to 3.8, obviously. I have that enabled. I'm not worried about saving, uh, or gaining one to two frames per second to mess with that option. But it's nice that I actually have it, because people were asking me to test it out in Dolphin, and I couldn't even, I mean, I had to use the Affinity, which sucks. That's stupid. Um, I was able to load my profile, my XMB, XMP profile, and get 2400. It did default to 2133 when I got the board, but I was able to change it, so I'm happy. No problem. Um, you could set different RAM settings here. I'm trying to look over the camera so I could see all the options. Um, for the voltage, I set it to offset offset mode. Um, it confused me because I did it didn't have what the number like I'm um, offsetting from was, but I just assumed it was 1.18, which is what the ASUS board was. But the ASUS board did tell me it was 1.18, and this is how I would lower this down to 1850 if I had my keyboard in front of me. I just had it higher to see if I could get the frequency higher, but it wasn't working. And then we have a lot of different options that are normal in any BIOS, and the ASUS board had all of these same options, obviously. I'm not going to go over every single one. You guys could see it and be happy with that.
because I'm trying to get this <laughs> through this. Um, without the the thing going head crazy, the capturing. Um, here are a lot more options than what the ASUS board had. Some of these are the same like storage configuration, South Bridge, North Bridge, computer configuration. I don't think the ASUS board had cool and quiet. I think that's why my ASUS motherboard was sticking to whatever the overclock frequency was and not going up and down where this board is. Um, SVM mode, uh, the ASUS board did have C6 mode was in the motherboard manual I think for the ASUS board but said it wasn't on all wasn't supported with all CPUs and I don't think it was in I don't think it was in the BIOS. Um, I'm gonna skip over all this stuff because it really doesn't have anything to do with what you guys care about and I'm gonna go to AMD CBS where there are a lot of settings that I'm not gonna mess with and also I'm not gonna click on because that's what screwed up my video capture before but I am gonna go into Zen Common Options where we again have the SMT mode. Um, like I said, you guys could look at all this, but what I wanted to show you, well, first I'll show you that there's different P states and, and C state control, which is nice that ASUS board did not also have that. But what I really wanted to show you is down core control. Up until, I actually didn't look at this until I was just, getting ready to record the video and this is the only time I've seen it in this manner like in the Ryzen Master it just lets you disable a number of cores and the ASUS board let you choose 2, 4, or 6 I think but you see here it says 2, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 0, 3, 3 plus 0, 4, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 0, 6, 3 plus 3 so I'm wondering if everybody's crying about this CC X thing I think it's what it's called right because I really don't care about it so I'm not crying about it nor looking that too much into it but that's interesting if you're actually a I'm assuming common sense would lead me to believe that you could have either two two cores one in one CCX one in the other CCX or two cores both of them being in the same CCX does that make sense guys if it does that's pretty interesting that you could actually change that I'd Maybe people already knew about this, but I didn't. But I'm going to leave that alone for now. I just wanted to show you guys all that. In Tool, we have, you know, basic stuff. RGB, LEDs, RAID installer, driver installer, flash for the BIOS. Hardware monitor, that's not the actual temperature. It's at least 20 degrees lower than that. And I don't even know why it would be that high. Because it idles at like 30 something when I'm in Windows so I don't know why it would be at 40 something now here in the uh, BIOS but I don't really care either but here we could see everything that is going on the voltages the fan speeds I have to go back in my motherboard and <laughs> I accidentally put it to the wrong uh, pin header but it, I don't think it really matters that much and I didn't feel like I, I have to like take a lot of stuff out to get back to that header and I don't feel like doing that but you could set the uh, fan speed based on the temperatures and also choose a critical temperature and you could you know this is all I guess like basic stuff that BIOSes have security I'm just gonna skip over that boot uh, just different boot options it's nice that they're there because I don't think uh, the ASUS even had <laughs> all these options like the number lock on or off and the setup prompt timeout full screen logo enabled or disabled and then exit where you could just save your changes or not save them um, okay what I wanted to talk about before I finish this video the only thing that this BIOS really doesn't have that the ASUS BIOS does have is in the ASUS BIOS you could save four profiles uh, for your overclocking here there are no overclocking profiles you just change what you change and that's it and if you wanna go back to default you go back to default otherwise you're just working with your one profile that you can't save multiple profiles but um, if you guys have any questions let me know I'll answer them 
Uh, if any of the quality, either audio or video, wasn't that great, I apologize, but I had to... I did this the best that I could, considering I'm still, like, very amateurish <laughs> in general. Never mind trying to do something that's a little complicated to do. Um, just make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and please, if you don't like stuff, tell me why, because you're not really helping me by... Because uh, a lot of people like it, some of the videos and then say why they like them, and that's great. But a lot of people dislike them, and nobody really says why. And that doesn't help me make better videos. That just, you know, I'm not a, a magician who could read people's minds. So if you're just a hater disliking because you hate AMD, or you hate my face, or you hate whatever I'm talking about, then that's fine. But if you have actual constructive criticism to tell me about something I could do better, then why don't you let me know? Because that is welcomed. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll see you guys later and, and thanks for watching.